Uh, I'll just share the screen. All right. Okay. Great. Um. So, uh, welcome to the ninth session of um the NPTEL course Foundations of our software. Um. I usually conduct these sessions on Fridays, but I was a little busy last Friday, so it's been postponed to today. So there are two simultaneous sessions happening um today. So um okay. And as usual, I'm not sure if you've attended any of these sessions before, but um these sessions are recorded and the recording is going to be uploaded to YouTube and whatever we discuss today, mainly the PPT, which has some practice questions and the R commands, those are going to be uploaded to the Google Drive and you have access to all of this via the NPTEL page. So before we start with some uh, R commands, do you have any questions from any of the previous weeks? Um, all right. So if there are no questions, then um, all right. Perfect. Thanks. Okay. So let's start. So this session, this week was not very tough. It was, um, I mean, we may be able to um, discuss all of this um, in lesser time today. So let's start. So, um, and please let me know if there's any confusion at any point of time, if something's not visible or if something's confusing, just let me know. All right, so um, now let's say if I, I have this random um, expression here and I'm just running this. So you see the output of this is, is it's, it's a big number which has a lot of decimal places as well. Okay, so if I simply write X or if I write uh, print X, it's printing some up to some fixed digits or up to some fixed decimal places. That is what is there internally in R. Um, and, uh, but if you want, so this is something we had seen last time in last week's class, that if you want to have some particular number of digits, so mind you, this is number of digits, it's not number of decimal places. So total number of digits in this output is four, right? Now, if, in addition to printing the output, you also want to print something else. You, you want to print the whole line that the answer is and whatever the value is then, right? So it would look something like this, right? You want the answer, whatever, not answers, but answer to the question is something. So of course, if I just run line number nine here, then since everything is in double quotes, it would just print X here. It's not going to print what the value of X is. If I print this line, line number 10, then it's saying it's something invalid, okay? Um, because print by default, it can only um, accept one input, okay? And this is that one input, right? So how do we, if, if I want to print more than one set of things, so we have some different commands and uh, one of those commands is cat. So cat stand is, is a short form for concatenate, which literally means to put things side by side or one after the other, one, one after another. Um, so if I just write this, so I write cat and before the comma in double quotes, I'm writing the answer to the question is, and after the comma, I'm writing X. And if I run this command, then it's printing the way I want it to, right? And you you can see that the output no longer has this um, one, right? Because it's it's not it's not you cannot save the output of cat, right? So um, if suppose I save it as a, so so you see what happened here. Um, I did this. I wanted to save this output, but A does not get that value. A gets null. And in fact, the output stays the same in, in the console, right? So cat is just for display. You cannot um, save the value of whatever cat is doing, okay? So fine. So that's one thing. Now, um, so we, we said that cat is putting things one after the other, but how is it putting that? Is it... So, so you can see here that this space, 
that you that I've highlighted here, that is introduced by the cat command, right? I did not have the space between my two um, inputs, right? So this and this, there was this space. So the default separator, uh, yeah, so the default separator between two or more inputs to the cat function is a single space. So if I run this command, so you see, the output is A space B space C. But let's say you want to separate them by something else. Okay. Very often you might want underscore. So if you do that, then you see that the separator is now underscore. Okay. Um, we will talk a little bit about this um, expression here. So this is, it's called an escape character. And this escape character, so backslash n, that uh, corresponds to a new line. So if you have this written somewhere, R or even more languages, they understand this as a um as as a way to go to the new line. But R should now go and write the output in the new line. So let's just see what this does in general. If I do this, so you see what happened. It printed A, then it put a space, right, and then it printed B, and then it printed. So you can see this highlighting thing here. So it printed the space as well. And then the cursor went to the next line. And then between the next line and C, it had another space. So um, this thing right here, right? So this is how it's reading the slash N. Um, if I have my slash N at the end, then you would not as such be able to appreciate that whether it's doing something because um, I mean, this output and this output they look the same um but okay so this is it's just that very often if you if you want to have your outputs in different line you can make use of this um slash n character okay now can you tell me something um i mean it, it's just going to be so there are going to be these small questions throughout this thing if if you feel it's okay then you can just um reply in the chat or unmute yourself and tell what you think the output of these lines is so if if you would like to try would you what what do you think the output of line number 24 and 25 is going to be so what's the length of this vector versus what's the length of when i do cat on the same three characters any guesses and that's okay if you're wrong we're just learning here. Uh, first, uh, 24 may length uh, 1 and uh -huh. 25 may length 3. Okay. Uh, mm, okay. So, 24 may, you see, there is the vector. 1. So, it's a vector, element, element, element. So, it's not going to be 1 here. It's a vector, right? When I write this. So, you see, if I if I save this as a temp variable. So, you see, it shows that it has 3 elements in this. So, this line 24, ka length is going to be um, 3. Right? But length of this so abhi we just saw that cat function is only for displaying it's not going to save anything even if you try to save it just shows null so now do you what do you think the output of line 25 would be zero hmm. correct so now you see what happened cat so it like printed the three characters, A, B, C. And then it said length of nothing. Basically, the inside is nothing. So it's like zero. So you're correct. Good. And likewise, if I do this thing. So here also, now you can see what happened at the end. Before printing zero, the cursor went to the next line because the last character was a new line character. But the output of both of them still says zero because cat function is not used for saving vectors. It's just for output. Okay. 
um again same examples if you want to cat or concatenate anything uh you can specify different separators it doesn't matter how complicated or simple they are so if i execute line 28 we just saw there'll be an underscore between all of them if you have something very complicated like lots of xxxx here then it's going to print something like this and if you say that the separator has to be a new line then everything gets printed in a new line so a new line b new line c um this one is this is also um so in line 32 this is something we just saw that there's a and then there is the space then there's a new line there's space again and then space again because the default separator is a single space. If you want that there should not be any spaces at all, then you just write double quotes open, double quotes close. There's no space in between them. So default is with space, but we are writing without any spaces. So if I execute line 33, then you see this got printed. So A, the new line, and then B and C. Okay. Um, another... In, in some cases, you might want to print the current date or the date and time, right? So, uh, so if I just write this date, uh, I'm not sure if this was very clear in the week where we were discussing uh, date and time, but the way default sys date does this thing is it, it does counting, it counts the days from wherever the calendar began in the system. So this is not very useful for us. So uh, what instead we do is like we write as dot character and then sys date. So this thing, the one that I've highlighted. So if I just print this here, so you got today's date, right? In, in the format, we have seen that this is the default format that R understands. So you can also write cat, the date is, and if you run this, you, you get this date. Um, and another useful, um, application of cat can be if you want to, um, save the output. So we talked that cat is for displaying, but you might as well be able to save that output into a file on your computer, right? So what we can try to do is, so this path that you see here, that's my current working directory, right? So if you remember working directory is the place on your computer where R can where R can read right now. So anything, any other folder, if there's any other folder you want to take a look at, you'll have to specify the path of that folder from here. That, okay, go back to folders and then go into that folder and then go into that folder and then select that file. But if we want to work in this folder itself, then we don't need to do anything. We just need to check that, okay, this is the folder which R shows here. And if you're working on R rather than R Studio, you can, to find this, you can just type the command get wd with the curved brackets. So it's short for get working directory. If I enter this, I get the same thing. Okay. Um. Yeah. So if I have to save, um, let's say just this character trial into a file named temp.txt. So if I execute this command line number 38 and I check, so this is the folder, this is the working directory. So you see, I have this file named temp.txt. So I get this file made here temp.txt. And if I open this, it's a simple word document. And you can see that the, um, the word trial is printed here. So that's one thing. Now, in R, there's something in general with anything. This is also applicable for, you know, when you use Excel or any other thing. You can't change the file name uh, while the file is open, right? You can't make changes to the file name and, you know, contents of it while the file is open. So whenever you're dealing with some file in R, um, if you if you're planning to overwrite it or, you know, write something else into it again, uh, don't keep the file open. So I'll just close the file and then we'll see something else. So if I execute line number 39 here, which says 
cat trial 2 and the file name still says the same. So what we'll see here is that it stays the same, but if I open it, it now has trial 2 printed here. So it's, it's overwritten the original file. Now, instead of overwriting the file, if you wanted to add something after it, because that's what the cat function also does. So you can just specify this command append is equal to true. So what it's going to do is it will not overwrite the original file. It will add the new thing to the previous file. So the previous file had this trial to written. If I run line number 40 and if I open this file now, then you see it has printed trial two and then after it has printed trial three. So these are some use cases that where the cat command can be useful. Um, again, exact cases depend as you use these commands more and more in whatever application you are interested in with R. Um, then this would become more clear, but mainly the cat function is to combine, uh, combine some characters or you know text when you're printing it, when you're displaying it or saving it, not to combine as a R variable. Okay, now. Um, so this is something we just saw, right? If we want to save some, save the output of cat into Y, it does not do that. It just cats. So it prints it, but it doesn't save it. So that's one case where cat will not be useful. Uh, another case. So we have been seeing examples where we had single, uh, variable, right? So we had just, I mean, it, it, it could be more alphabets also even if it was like this but when you are dealing with vectors right when you have one vector and another vector and you sort of want to combine the two vectors in some form so what it's doing is it's just simply putting all of them one after the other it doesn't care if this was one set and this was another set maybe i sort of wanted a and b written together and then b and e written together and c and f written together so that is not happening. It just puts them all one after the other. So if this is the kind of thing you're interested in, then it's great. But what if this is the sort of output we want, right? So how to sort of obtain this then, right? So then we will talk about another function that is paste, okay? So paste function can be used to display like that, just like the cat function, but you can also save that into a variable and it can handle vectors the way we now are interested in. Okay, so let's see the syntax of the paste function. Again, if you just write paste A, B, and C, it looks um, similar, right? I mean, here also, you the, the basic function here also was, uh, where is it? This one, A, B, C. But the major difference that you see here, um, observe the this one uh, and the double quotes around the output, right? So it now says that there is one output and that one output is, it, it can be understood as a character, right? So it means that obviously if, if something in R has a length, and it is, a, it is some sort of data, you can save that, right? So again, just like the cat command, the default here was also a blank space, but you can specify anything as the separator. So the SCP argument here can be used. If you do that, then you get this thing written and you can also save this. So if you save it into Y, then it gets saved. And the length of this output is going to be one. And now we can take this example of where we wanted to um, have some vectors side by side. So if I run this command, so you see what it did here was, so this became my first element, A space D. This is my second element, B space E, and C space F became the third element. So if I just uh, run this, so you can see I have now um, three elements in my output vector. Instead of using white spaces, if I do 
separator as underscore, everything still stays the same. I mean, I still have um, three elements in this vector. Now, in addition to the separator argument, there's one there's one more argument in um, paste, which is called collapse. So, um, so here what happened was I had one input vector, I had another input vector, and it just pasted them uh, side by side, right? So first element and first element, second and second, third and third. So I still have three elements. What collapse does is after you have done the separator thing, it collapses those into one element, one final element. So if I run this now, and I see what the output of Z3 is. So you see what it did, this A and, um, okay, this was Z2, right? So A underscore D, that A underscore D is here. B underscore E is also here. And C underscore F is also here. But now what happened to these three elements um, is that they're now, instead of three elements, they are now a single element and they, they're now joined together using um, this X collapse um, argument. Uh, does this make sense? Yes, ma'am. All right. Okay. Do you have any questions so far? No. All right. Okay. Fine. So, uh, again, just clarifying that the... Um, the out of the paste function this it's if you're using both separator and collapse then uh separator is the first step and collapse is the second step all right and uh, of course so out of this z2 it's it's a normal vector that we've been seeing all all this while so we have three elements so you can access these elements so if i just want to access the first element i'll write z2 which is the name of the vector. And then I write my square brackets to access element. If I want to access the first element, I'll write one here. If I want to access the third element, I'll write three. If I write four instead, then it would not give me anything because it does not have four elements, right? Okay. Um, and now um, one thing, um, one important difference with the paste function as opposed to the cat function uh, again this is this is a very minor thing but it's hard to remember but nevertheless it's worth mentioning that the paste and the print commands they do not recognize this new line character which is weird but that's how it is so if i just paste um this thing using um, the separator is um, slash n, then you see it just prints that as it is, right? It's not it's not recognizing that it's a new line. It's using slash n as two characters, slash and n. So it's just using that as the separator between each of the things. And well, um, maybe it was not clear, but when you are doing paste, you don't just, you, you need not just have two things to paste. You can have three things to paste. So let's say this is the first thing, this is the second thing, and this is the third thing. So what it's going to do, it's going to take the first thing, like first, first, first of all of them, second, 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 third, 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 right? And since this one is just one in length, so it gets repeated thrice. So the output is A, D, and slash N, and then it's the second one is B, E, and slash N. And the third one is C, F, and slash N. Right? So that's what this is doing. Uh, if at any point of time this becomes confusing, I mean, you can always ask me. But the best way out would be that if you try this on your own, you would have access to this script after the class. So um, definitely give these commands a try and then they should be clearer. Um, okay. Okay. The print function also does the same thing. It does not recognize the new line character. Okay. Anyway, so so this is where we were starting off with. So if you want to paste um, something, so this is one way to go, um, right? So you have this blank space uh, as the separator here also. 
um very often when we are doing paste commands um a lot of times you might not want a separator right we just talked that you would you might want this separator right no space at all so what people in r they've done is that they have made a new command it's called paste zero and paste zero by default it means that the separator is this so if you have blank um like no space as the separator for the paste function it's the same as saying paste zero and the thing that you want to paste so it just saves you a little time so both the outputs are exactly the same okay um so so far so good now i have one more question so there are two things happening so in in line number um 83 and 84 I am saying paste one, two, three, four, five, just like that. And I'm saying paste um, C and these numbers. So if I execute both of them, um, in one case, I get five different um, elements as the output. And in the other case, I get just one single element as the output. Can you think what's happening here? It's This question is meant to confuse you. But think about it. Why, why is paste behaving differently when I give it one vector of five elements versus five elements? Any guesses? So, uh, ma'am, as we do C, C can use why to C can use a is there are five uh, vector five elements in a vector. Uh -huh. In 34, there, there is only one vector as a tree pitch. Okay. So, you are right. But there is a slight, I mean, maybe maybe you, you mean the right thing. Maybe I have not understood. But let me just say that again. So, so, what, so, we just saw paste function. What it does is, if you have like vectors like this, so it's basically first input. And second input, it's going to combine between those. So here you have five different inputs. So it's going to combine between those. So it's going to combine one and two and three and four and five. So you got just one output. Now in line number 83, uh, R understands that th this entire thing is one input and there is no other input. So it doesn't combine within the first input itself. Right? So you see, when we were taking this example, it did not do anything to A, B, C, right? A and B and C, they were always in different groups because they were one, they were a single input. So they remained separate. So here also, this thing is one input. If there was something else after this, then that would have been joined with one, with two, with three, with four, with five. So basically here it did nothing. The paste function was not getting applied at all. And here the paste function got applied between 1 and 2 and 3 and 4 and 5. Yeah? Okay, no. Yeah? So, again, it's it's not very important, but examples like this can just help you uh, improve your understanding of how R is uh, taking your inputs. Because, it's, it, because for us, it can become very easy to confuse whether to write C or not. It's, it's a very simple mistake to make. But the output in both cases, they look very different, right? In one case, you have just one element. In one case, you have five elements. Um, okay. So, now, um, let's take a slightly um, different example. So, I have, let's say I have this matrix with me M. And if we take a look at what M looks like. So, I have, so what I specified here was the, this matrix has two columns and 50 rows and I'm filling it with numbers from 1 to 100 and I'm not filling them by row, I'm filling them by column. So then 1 to 50 in column 1 and then 51 to 100 in column 2. Okay. So now what I have done here is, it's, it's very similar to what we saw earlier. So can you tell me what the highlighted thing does? Do you remember how you access elements of a matrix? Any idea what what would the highlighted thing give me? Uh, 
second uh, second first column yes perfect exactly so this is first column and this is second column right so basically what i'm doing now if i take the whole column it's almost like a vector right it's one dimensional just elements one after the other so again it's very similar that what i'm doing here is i'm taking the first column I'm taking the second column and I'm saying paste them using underscore, underscore, underscore as the separator. So if I run this, then you see what I got was I got 50 elements. This is the first element. So basically 1 and 51 combined, 2 and 52 combined, so on and so forth until 50 and 100 are combined. So, okay. Now, the length of this is 50. The number of rows in that matrix was also 50. So I can combine them, right? So I can do this basically. Uh, C bind of M comma this thing. Right? I can do, I can just paste this output. Uh, I mean, I can just, so C bind, if you remember, it's basically you're adding a column to a matrix. And I'm saying that new column should be this just this paste combination that we just made. So if I did that, and I'm just saving it into a new name, I'm just calling it N. So this is what this line number 91 is doing. This is the same thing as what we just calculated, right? So, so this line, if I execute this, um, this N vector, so now you see what it did. So it's just that I'm, the new thing that we pasted, uh, I've called it, I've made it into a new column for um, the matrix N. Uh, okay, yes, wait one second. Mm, okay, now, so we just saw this example, right? Uh, when we're doing paste using the separator. Do you... Can, can you think of what would happen if instead of separate, I write collapse? So maybe uh, I can just, yeah. Uh, element ke bich mein separation ho, collapse ho jai, separation. Correct. Bilkul. Absolutely. Perfect. So pe, there is a default separator, right? Even though we have not written, but that separator is a single space. So, what is going to happen? Ye jo 1 underscore 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 51 tha, uski jaga 1 space 51 aega. But after that 1 space 51 and 2 space 52, these will get collapsed. So, this is going to be the output now. So, 1 space 51, 2 space 52, 3 space 53 ye tha, separator ke saath. But with collapse, I got these all everything got collapsed into one. So I you see there is just one output. So line number 90 here. Usse hume sab ek output. Ma'am, ma'am. Ha. Ma'am, collapse is equal to uh, uh, jo column mein likha gaya hai. Agar underscore hata denge to one uh, one of fifty one ek mein hi ho jayega kya? Nahi. So one or um so yahan pe with only right collapse bus. Huh, with only cheese, right? Ye cheese. This is what you're saying. Only collapse, not equal to could be no. No, collapse may have to give We have to give something. Okay. Collapse sort of argument. We dena hai ki which character to use to collapse. Okay, okay. So if we have to say that blank ho. Matlab, there is no space here. So if I do that. तो यहाँ पे क्या हुआ? देखो, one and fifty one के बीच में, so एक सेकंड, maybe I'll just draw something out. Uh, give me one second. Okay, so हमारे पास यहाँ पे था one and then हमारे पास fifty one, two fifty two, three fifty three. ऐसा करके था. So हमारा Step 1 may you use separator and step 2 may you use collapse. Okay. Now, separator jo hai, 
this by default is there is the space here in between ठीक है यहां पर there is the space तो हमने जो um, let's say हमने पहला example लिया था कि um, this column this column and separator is equal to we wrote this है ना एंड कोलैप्स तो कुछ लिखा नहीं था तो कोलैप्स नहीं करेगा वो देर नो कोलैप्स तो देन वॉट वी गॉट वन अंडर स्कोर अंडर स्कोर अंडर स्कोर फिफ्टी वन टू फिफ्टी टू थ्री फिफ्टी थ्री तो हमारे पास ये तीन एलिमेंट्स आ गए थे ठीक ये फर्स्ट केस था अब जो सेकेंड केस है उसमें हमने सेपरेटर तो कुछ डाला नहीं तो वो डिफॉल्ट आ जाएगा एंड कोलैप्स में हमने ये अंडरस्कोर डाला तो जब कोलैप्स डालते हैं तो दो स्टेप्स में काम होता है पहले तो सेपरेटर होगा तो सेपरेटर की वजह से हमारा ये आ जाएगा विद द स्पेस इन बिटवीन एंड देन स्टेप टू में क्या होगा वील गेट वन फिफ्टी वन अंडर स्कोर देन टू फिफ्टी टू देन थ्री फिफ्टी थ्री तो ये जो बीच के स्पेसेस हैं मतलब स्पेस तो हो ही गया था ऑलरेडी आ गया था स्पेस फिर दीज थ्री गॉट कंबाइन इन टू वन तो देन यू जस्ट गॉट वन एलिमेंट डज दिस मेक सेंस Yeah. Uh, think about it and definitely practice separator and collapse ke different different combinations आप enter करके देखो um, it will definitely get more clear this is not very easy but you'll be able to do it with some tries okay um last thing so अभी तक all cases that we are seeing we are always seeing that if the first input has three elements the second also has three elements yahan pe bhi if the first input had 50 elements the second input also had 50 elements but what if the first input here has four elements but the second input is just one element to so, isme we had seen previously when we were doing vector addition and all to kya hoga jo second wala case hai it's just going to be repeated four times चार है बट सेकेंड वाले में से दो है सितंबर है थर्टी डेज अक्टूबर है थर्टी वन डेज नवंबर है थर्टी डेज दिसंबर है थर्टी वन डेज परफेक्ट यस तो वो रिपीट हो जाएगा थर्टी थर्टी वन हुआ एंड देन फिर से थर्टी थर्टी वन हो जाएगा परफेक्ट ग्रेट सो दिस सीम्स की द पेस्ट फंक्शन इज क्लियर ओके एंड देन वी जस्ट हैव अ लिटिल समथिंग एल्स तो पेस्ट एंड कैट दोनों में वी वर कम्बाइनिंग इनपुट्स राइट वेरी ऑफन जैसे अगर सपोज करो यहाँ पे जो हमने ये हमारा थर्ड कॉलम था अगर इससे हमें फर्स्ट और सेकेंड कॉलम वापस चाहिए तो हाउ टू डू दैट तो यू आर बेसिकली स्प्लिटिंग समथिंग एंड अ कॉम्बिनेशन ऑफ कैरेक्टर्स इन जनरल उसको हम स्ट्रिंग बोलते हैं एनी थिंग विच इज इन रिटर्न इन डबल कोर्स बट आई मीन यू कैन कॉल इट कैरेक्टर और स्ट्रिंग सेम थिंग तो देर इज अ फंक्शन इन आर इट्स कॉल्ड एस टी आर स्प्लिट तो इट्स इट्स शॉर्ट फॉर्म स्ट्रिंग स्प्लिट तो वी हैव वी हैव सीन दीज एग्जाम्पल्स राइट तो लेट्स से इफ वी हैव दीज केसेस वाई एंड जेड तो इसमें इफ वी डिड पेस्ट विद सेपरेटर यू गॉट दिस थिंग एज द सेपरेटर इफ यू डिड पेस जीरो देन नथिंग गॉट like there was no separator right so sab kuch one after the other okay now string split mein what we can do is we can specify how what character to use to split the string 
सो पहले यू सी लाइन नंबर वन जीरो फोर तो हमने वाई इनपुट दिया एंड वी सेट स्प्लिट इट यूजिंग दी अंडर स्कोर कैरेक्टर सो इफ आई डू दैट देन यू सी वॉट आई गॉट आई गॉट थ्री इनपुट्स लाइक थ्री आउटपुट्स सो अंडर स्कोर के पहले वाला लाइक बिफोर एंड आफ्टर एवरी अंडर स्कोर राइट सो दैट इज वेरी गॉड स्प्लिट नाउ इफ आई गिव जेड एज द इनपुट राइट जिसमें तो कोई अंडर स्कोर तो नहीं है तो इफ इंस्टेड ऑफ राइटिंग स्प्लिट इज अंडर स्कोर इफ आई राइट स्प्लिट इज नथिंग सो एनी आइडिया वॉट इट वुड डू So it's going to split at every place. So you see, because this is like blank, na? So A, मतलब here it's splitting. So A, then B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I. So it's just going to give you everything. And uh, obviously, there has to be something to split. So you can't just write what you have to split without specifying where to split. So split character, आपको देना है. जैसे paste वगैरह में तो सेपरेटर डिफॉल्ट एक था कि स्पेस इज द डिफॉल्ट सेपरेटर बट स्प्लिट स्ट्रिंग स्प्लिट के केस में स्प्लिट डज नॉट हैव एनी डिफॉल्ट वैल्यू ओके नाउ सो यू सी हियर व्हाट यू गॉट देयर वाज दिस वन इन डबल स्क्वायर ब्रैकेट एंड देन दिस थिंग डज दिस सेम फैमिलियर ये डेटा टाइप हमने पहले देखा हुआ है क्या कहीं पर Sorry, say that again. List, yes, correct. So, if what I can do, अगर मैंने इसको split करा, if I say split using underscore, right? Or split using um three underscores. So you see what I got. So हर um एलिम हर रो के लिए तो जो first वाला रो था उसके हमें दो कैरेक्टर्स मिले सेकेंड वाले के लिए भी दो कैरेक्टर्स मिले थर्ड के लिए भी दो कैरेक्टर्स फोर्थ में भी दो कैरेक्टर्स एंड सो ऑन अप अपिल फिफ्टी के लिए भी दो कैरेक्टर्स तो इसलिए लिस्ट फॉर्मेट इज द आउटपुट तो अगर हमें चेक करना है किसी चीज का फॉर्मेट तो वी कैन यूज द क्लास कमांड तो जो स्ट्रिंग स्प्लिट है दैट गिवस एज अस्ट टाइप आउटपुट और any idea what would this give me if i just have this random value 26 and 3 underscore 76 and i say split using a single underscore how many outputs will i get so we have three underscores right तो इट्स गोइंग टू स्प्लिट एट दिस थ्री प्लेसेस सो तीन में स्प्लिट होगा तो हमें चार आउट चार आउटपुट्स मिलेंगे राइट सो यू सी वी गॉट ट्वेंटी सिक्स सो दिस वॉज बिफोर द फर्स्ट अंडर स्कोर दिस ब्लैंक इज दिस थिंग वेर माई कर्सर इज द सेकेंड ब्लैंक इज दिस प्लेस हियर एंड सेवेंटी सिक्स इज आफ्टर द लास्ट अंडर स्कोर ओके सो लाइक वाइज इन दिस केस ऑल्सो इफ आई से स्प्लिट यूजिंग जस्ट वन अंडर स्कोर देन आई गेट फोर आउटपुट्स फॉर एवरी Uh, all right. Ah, uh, okay. Where are we? Ah, uh, yeah. Okay. So this is something. I mean, again, this is just more understanding that more. So if you split that, you got this output. I'm just saving that again. So R one, you got a list of fifty elements. If you unlist all of that, if you get something like R two, then this is what you get, right? One and then fifty two, one uh, and fifty one, two fifty two, three fifty three. Now, what you can do is, if I want to obtain the same matrix again, so it's basically one fifty one, two fifty two. So I can fill it using a sub row wise. So if I fill it row wise, then the first column. Second column, first column, second column, first column, second column, right? So if I do that, if I say fill it by row, 
then when I do R3, I get my original matrix back. Um, but the only problem here was, you see, here I got um, that in double quotes. Because it's considering it to be a string. Na? So string is a character type. So I can just explicitly say, ki, make it as numbers. And then if I um, make another R4, then I got a um, matrix, number matrix. Again, this is just extra information. Ki once you have split something, you can remake it into you know any format you want. These are just vectors at the end. So you can format them in any way. Okay, final three, four commands. So we have seen different um, commands so far where, you know, you might want to find the length of something. So sometimes you may want to find the length of each element, right? I mean, so um, yeah, So suppose I execute line 122. So what is going to say? Mm. So it says it's six because there are six elements in this. If I say n char, then what it's going to tell me, it's going to tell me the length of each of these elements. So the first element here is this. So there are four. Course has six elements. Is has two elements. There's this blank here. So it has zero elements. Then I have NPTL. But after that, I have this extra blank. So it will count that blank and it says it has six elements here. And then this NOC uh, 24 MA95, this has, it says it has 10 elements. Okay. Now there is another very similar function, another very similar command, which has NZ character. So basically this is telling me if any of these elements are zero in length, if anything is zero in length, then it's going to, I mean, if any of these elements are non-zero in length, basically. So the first one is four, right? So it's non-zero. So it says true, true, true. This one has zero length. So it says false. So again, this, this is such commands can be useful when you, you know, let's say somebody sent you a big Excel file and you just want to check if something is filled in every column or not. Then maybe you can use this command. And if this command gives you false anywhere, then you know that, okay, somebody has not filled something in, you know, some column in some row. So you need to be sure that, okay, um, that is blank. So maybe, you know, you need to be careful about it. And um, if, so this is N characters. So it doesn't care whether it's a decimal point or not. As long as it's typed, it will count it. So this has one element, like this has one length, this has length of two, and this has length of four, because there are four uh, elements typed here, four alphabets or four numbers typed here. And then there are these two commands where, so this is also, you know, you, you would have seen these in MS Word. You, you want to convert everything to uppercase or to lowercase. So simple, if you have this um, vector here, which has random combinations, A, B, C, small and up, like lowercase, uppercase. So you can just write two lower or two upper and everything, whatever can be become, can be made into capital, it will become capital. And whatever can be made small, it will be made small. Numbers are not a problem here. Okay, so that's about whatever was covered in this week. This was not a lot. Um, as a practice, I do have three or four questions. So we'll just quickly go over that as well. But you've been doing this so far, so it should not be very much very problematic. Um, okay, so if I have the command paste. The age of three students are, and I have this vector 18 years, 19 years, 20 years. And I say that collapse using uh, comma, space, and space. What do you think is going to happen? Uh, the age of three students are uh, mm. 18 years and 20 years. The age of three students are 19 years and 20 years. Okay, um, you're almost there. So 20, so 18, 19, 20 is all 
these are three inputs. So the age of three students are, and then there's going to be a space and 18 years. And then there's going to be, so the first, so again, the same thing that we just saw. Um, so the age of three students are 18 years with this space here, right? And similarly, you'll do that for 19 years. Similarly, the whole thing for 20 years. And then this collapse comes. So then you'll write and, and. So all of this is going to be one, one element. Yeah, so we can just quickly um, copy this into R and double check. So if I write this here, so you see, the age of three students are 18 years. And then it did and, right? So this was the collapse. The age of three students are 19 years. And then it did the collapse. And then the last output. Right? So if I would not have had this collapse thing, then these would be just three inputs. One and two and then three. And then, but with the collapse thing, it just collapsed these three into one sentence, like one element. So here, like in the middle of, so between one and two and between two and three, you have that collapse thing uh, entered. Yeah. Okay. Um. Okay. So what do you think this is going to do? I say print and then paste. The attendance has been... Um, so it's 10 multiplied by a vector which has um, 6, 3, and 1. Any idea? So first of all, you can solve this. So scalar multiplied by a vector. 16, 30, uh, and 10. Perfect. Right? So, so now, yeah. The attendance has been 16. Uh, one, uh, one star when I get, so the attendance has been 30, the attendance has been 10. Perfect. Absolutely. Exactly. And then same thing here. And then same thing here. Yes, so you have three elements. Great, good. Um, okay. Now, what is the output of string split? Landlord of house number 100, colon, colon, colon. Landlord of house number 200. Then you have four colons. Landlord of house 300. And this, so this is, the whole thing is one um, string. And then you need to split it using um the colon so how many elements are we going to have so you can just we can count together what what would the first element be so it's going to split using the colon right so between each colons it's going to be a different character so the first colon is occurring here so everything before the first colon, so landlord of house number 100. That's your first element. Then the second element is here. So that's just blank. Right? It's just simple blank. The third is here. So that's also going to be a blank. This is the fourth one. The fourth one is landlord of house number 200. Then the fifth is going to be this thing. This is sixth. This is seventh. So fifth, sixth, seventh, they're all going to be your just empty blanks. And then the eighth one here is going to be landlord of house number 300 okay we can just quickly try the previous one and this one to just to double check 
if you are doing it correct. Right, so this is exactly what you just told. So that's correct. And this one. Hmm, so if I, yeah, if I write this. So you see the um, length of. Hmm, yeah, I mean length of. Uh, uh, uh. Let's say yes. So the length is eight, right? This is one, then two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Okay. So we have eight elements. And I think this is the last question. Um, yeah. So X is 36, Y is 27. Um, cat the square root of x is sqrt x and the cube root of y is y to the power 1 by 3 and um i think this is just to get to a new line so this is not super important but um, yeah so what would the main output be So wherever there are double quotes, R is not going to replace X or Y with anything. But where there is not double quotes, it would uh, calculate. So the square root of X is, here is going to print 6. And the cube root of Y is, here is going to print 3. Right, so if I run these lines here. Ah, okay, so it's just going to print this exclamation sign and it's going to go to the new line. So yeah, that's just this thing. Okay. Um, all right. So that's pretty much what we had for um this week. The assignment is due tomorrow. And uh the next session is going to be on Friday at the usual time. So same um, Zoom link, Friday 6 p.m. for week 10. Okay. Um, I will stop sharing my screen now. And do you have any question before we end today's class? All right. Okay. Thank you so much. Um, and uh, in case you still have any doubts, you can put it on the discussion forum on the NPTEL page. Uh, otherwise, I'll see you on uh, next Friday, like in three days. So, yeah. Thank you for joining. Um, good night. Bye-bye. Ma'am. Yeah. Ma'am. Uh, uh, how to fill uh, the question in NPTEL forum form? Oh, okay. Uh, one second. So, um, you can see this Q&A page here. So if you open that, um, it's going to take you to a um, Google. Yeah, I think I'll just have to log in. Screen, screen share is over. Oh, I'm so sorry. Oh, one second. Yes. Mm, okay. So you can see this um, Q&A option here on the NPTEL page. So if you just click on that. Um, is going to take you to this uh, discussion forum. So you can put in your questions here. All right. Okay. Yeah. Okay. All right. Um, thanks for joining. Um, good night. Bye-bye.